Well, time now uh, from that very interesting story from Salim Bilu, we move to who owns Kenya and uh, it is an interesting one as well this week. Now, Tatu City is possibly the most famous and ambitious real estate project in the country today, despite the fact that it is still in very early stages of development. Now, besides the massive scale of the project, Tatu City has also been in the news lately over a controversy that arose around shareholding and project management issues. Now, this led to a legal tussle and the matter is still in court. So so we won't go into the details of that. Now, despite this initial setback that threatened to derail the ambition of creating Africa's largest city of the future, the management of Tattoo City project was not deterred. The project is back on track and its phase one, which is construction of key infrastructure, uh, has already begun. But how was this ambitious project with a strange name, Tattoo, conceived? Now, it all started one afternoon way back in 2007 when the CEO of Moscow-based investment bank, the Renaissance Group, Stephen Jennings, visited the country and had a meeting with the CEO of Bidco Group, industrialist Vimal Shah. Now, although the meeting was meant to discuss other investment opportunities and ideas, the discussions between the two CEOs veered off to real estate. They took a chopper from the city to Ruiru in Kiambu County, where Vimal Shah, former CBK governor Nahashon Nyaga, and some partners were thinking of developing a housing project. After getting an aerial view of the choking rush hour traffic jam on Thika Highway, Stephen Jennings, the Renaissance Group CEO, saw the perfect investment opportunity. He didn't need further convincing. In the cars caught in the traffic jam, the Renaissance Group boss saw potential investors who would be happy to be saved the hassle of traffic jams if an alternative city was created. And so a city with an unusual name, Tatu, which is Swahili, of course, for three, representing the three elements of holistic living, that is life, work and play, was born literally in the air. Now today, what started as just a dream between three visionaries is taking shape into the most ambitious real estate development project in Africa. Tattoo City has also received the endorsement of Vision 2030 CEO Mugo Kibati, who described it as a model for sustainable urban development and one that will be a reference point for other African countries. Now, the only other similar project whose magnitude can be compared to Tattoo City is South Africa's Santon City. And, and the international significance of the Tattoo City project is aptly captured in a write-up that appeared in the May 5th edition of the respected international weekly, The Economist. So get hold of that, the May 5th edition, if you want to read more about the significance of this project internationally. But to get a good glimpse of the magnitude of Tattoo City, let's take a look at the project's vital statistics. We start with the number 350 billion. That's the estimated cost of the project. 1,000 hectares, that's the land. Now this is equivalent to 930 football fields or 10 square kilometers, 1,000 hectares. 70,000, that's the number of anticipated residents of Tattoo City, 30,000, the number of anticipated daily visitors. 10,000 is the number of trees to be planted to beautify the boulevards of Tattoo City. 35% of land will be reserved as green spaces for environmental purposes. 25 minutes is the time it will take to drive from Jomo Kenyatta International Airport to Tattoo City via the Eastern Bypass. Eight to 10 years is the amount of time it will take to complete the project. So should Kenyans desiring to buy residential and commercial property start streaming to Ruiru for a piece of the action at Tattoo City? Not so fast, that will come later. For now, Tattoo City management is focusing on the construction of roads, highways, communications, power, water and sewerage systems, as well as other infrastructural support structures. 
Now the strategy of Tatu City Management is to get the ideal infrastructure in place and then have developers purchase land, develop it according to strict plans, standards and deadlines. It is these developers who will in turn sell the ready properties to individuals. So brings us to the big question, exactly who is behind this multi-billion dollar project? Now the directors of Tatu City Limited are Vibal Shah, who of course is the CEO of Bidco Refineries, Nahashan Nyaga, the former central bank governor, Hans Horn, who is uh, a member of the Renaissance Group, and Arnold Mayer, also from the Renaissance Group. But the real power behind the project is actually the investment conglomerate headed by Stephen Jennings, the Renaissance Group whose local operational base is on the sixth floor of Pershottam Place, that's in Westlands. Now, since its launch in Russia in 1995, the Renaissance Group has grown into a global, multi-dimensional investment bank focusing on high support uh, unity emerging and frontier markets. Um, that's what its focus has been. Now, the group was early this month named the Investment Bank of the Year that is in Africa. Their Renaissance group is a story for another day, however, so much to say about it and we simply don't have the time. So back to Tatu City now and the ownership of this ambitious 350 billion uh, shilling real estate project is categorized in two groups. We have majority and minority shareholders as well and let's take a look at them. We of course have the Renaissance group who are majority shareholders. And we have local investors who include Vimal Shah, Nahashan Nyaga, Stephen Mbugwa Mwagiru and partners as well are represented there. They hold a significant, uh, they hold a minority shareholding, but it is nevertheless a significant shareholding as well. Now, it is significant to note that one of the minority shareholders, Stephen Bugwa, we've just mentioned him, unsuccessfully attempted to have Tattoo City put on hold through courts, citing breach of contract, but the court ruled that the project has to go on concurrently with the court case. So it is still in full steam ahead mode, uh, and Tattoo City continues. We'll see how they go with the infrastructure stage, and eight to 10 years is the projected time for the development of the full project brings us to our quote of the week and it reads it's tangible it's artistic and it's beautiful that's why the most solid investments are in real estate and that's from Donald Trump who needs no introduction <laughs> and from there we move to sports Michael Kingy will be here in just a moment stay with Sunday life